right, so it's Tim. Today we are going to load some 357 Magnum, okay? I got some uh, 158 grain wad cutters. They are coated in high tech coating, which is like basically like a thin layer of powder paint of some sort that helps from leading in your barrel. I'm going to be using H110. We got some small pistol Magnum, small Magnum pistol primers. I got my Lee Deluxe pistol die set. I got a bunch of clean brass and I'm just going to show you the process that I go through. I do not normally do this on a single stage press, but I'm sure that a whole bunch of people just went out and bought some. So I'm going to do it on a single stage press. Just show you the whole involved process of that. Um, I like to do it on a turret style press where I just throw all my dies in there and go through, do one stage, just twist it. And that really helps when you're doing your uh, seating, crimping, all that. But we'll do a single stage press. It's it's a lot more involved and uh, it just might open your eyes up to spend the extra couple dollars, right? So, okay, so the first step, I got all my brass here and what we're gonna need to do is pull out my cookie sheet, give it a wipe down here real quick with something. Give it some dust. Okay, and then go ahead, take a couple handfuls And that's how to get us started. And we're gonna reach up here through the camera and grab our uh, case lube. So when you run your cases through a die, you wanna use some form of case lube branded stuff. I'll just give this stuff a quick little shot. All right, that's all it needs. You can let it dry or not, your choice. Okay, now we're just gonna take this and to, before I get too involved here, there's directions on how to set your die up. I mean, in every single manufacturer, RCBS or Lyman or whoever you're using, Lee, and they give you, they do give you some load data in here, right? But I'm not going to be using that load data because this is mostly 38 special, but it says that it can do 357, right? So here you go. This one has nice detailed pictures on what you should do to have your die set up properly. I've already gone ahead and set my die up. So now I got it lubed. It goes really easy. And there you go. See, so we pop the, the primer out. The case is now in dimension or should be. And now the only thing we're gonna have to do is come in here. Okay, we're sized, we're under, it fits, we're good. So now we'll go ahead and throw that in our glass jar, right? So. We'll go ahead and we'll do a bunch of these. Except, you know what I need? I need to put my, uh, somewhere right here. Put this down in here. Like a so. Come up. Put that, see? There we go. Now we're in business. Now we won't be dropping primers everywhere. We'll capture them all and throw them in, in the bin. Okay, so we're just... We're just gonna go ahead and size these and then we will uh, then we'll we'll go back to that step on checking the link making sure that's correct because not every single one you can't just check one in a batch and call it good because they're unique just like people everyone's different right okay so here we go we're going to town now if you're first if you're just starting out doing this it might be uh, a, a major task and you might get frustrated. So just do one step at a time, right? So go ahead, throw your uh, brass in the tumbler or if you bought one of those uh, other styles that use the ultrasonics or whatever, or pin tumbler or whatever you got, go ahead and do that one day and get your brass all prepped and ready. Maybe, maybe, uh, the next day you come in, you go ahead and you do this for a little bit. Make sure all your brass is is uh, deprime sized, and maybe depends on how much you want to do, right? So then maybe uh, trim it to length, and then come in and do your powder and everything else, right? So we're just moving along on this. Now there's other style of 
presses, this is called a single stage press and it's a single stage because, so here, here's a good example. So this case, I don't know if we can get the dents in there or not. Let me hold it up closer. See those dents? That's something that you don't want to see. So hopefully when we run this through, it should pop our dents out. See, that's where our dents were. Now they're gone. They're just ever so slightly there, but they're gone. Let me see. See them right, right there, but they're, they're not like they were. That's stuff that happens when they get tumble around on the ground at the range or certain guns leave certain dents or things like that and all kinds of differences. So this is either stuff that I shot or picked up or something. No telling. So the single stage press, that's where I think I was, was is one die and that's a stage, right? So you only get to do one stage at a time. Then they have turret presses, which has a turret up here that you just move index manually. And you can have, I think, a three, a five, or a seven uh, stage, we'll call it, where it you just you can go through, do all this, and then you would spin it. Uh, I can show you one of them in a little bit. I'm not going to reach down there just yet. And then there's what there's called a progressive, which means you put your casing in and every pull it's doing something so you put it in and it, it auto indexes to the next stage it's dumping powder it's seeding bullets it's so once you get going you pull the lever down and then you might have to pull more forward to do something that might be you put a, just an empty one in there it's putting a primer in and then it's putting a bullet in and then it's the powder then the bullet and then crimping and then before you know it every pull you're doing one shell's kicking out that's completely done and that's nice but those presses usually cost more money right so this is one reason that i think a lot of people are trying to save money maybe and they bought a single single stage press they might regret it in the end for handgun ammunition it's it's a lot it's a lot better for rifle ammunition, especially because a lot of that takes more pressure to push down to size them and stuff like that. But, and you're not usually shooting your 30 out 6 or 7 mag by the thousands of rounds that you would maybe a 9 millimeter, right? So, okay. All right, so let's, let's move on. Otherwise, this is going to take forever, right? So, we have a handful of brass. Um, and I'll get back with you when I get this stuff done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and gone through some of my bin here. These ones all fit into my gauge, like so. So they're good to go. There was a few so far that I found that did not fit. Well, that one was just tight. I didn't like that one. So let's see. Let's find one that did not fit. Try this one. Now they're all going to fit. Right there, there we go. So this one did not fit, it did not go in there. So we know we need to trim that one. I set them off to the side or if they were kind of sticky going in here. All right, so now, okay, so I've gone ahead and I've put my powder through expander die on and I've gone ahead and set it up with trial and error. So uh, what that does, this one's a little bit more flared out than I like to see, but what it does is lets your your cartridge, your casing open up, flares this end out, and then accepts the projectile. And then you are able to also dump your powder in at the same time. So it's going to flare it, dump your powder in, and then you're going to use a block of wood with holes drilled in it that your casing can sit into like this. Or they sell manufactured plastic uh, jobs, but these are free. Those cost money. We're doing it on the cheap, right? So... All right, so we got our projectile. I think this is the one that where that's about where I want to be. Maybe just flared just a little bit more than that, but it just takes a little bit of fine tuning and they will give you directions on what you need to be doing, right? So follow your manufacturer, your dye manufacturer's um, stuff and go from there. Okay, so the other thing is, is that primers. Get one of these out. 
So here's your primer. You always want to make sure that this open end is the end that is going into your cartridge. Now most, most of your press manufacturers have some form of uh, primer cedar. So here's a primer and we can take our cartridge, put it in here, push it down all the way. And then there you go. You want to make sure that it's nice and smooth in the back. And we know that case is primed. So I already did one, this one. Now the other option to do that is a hand primer and uh, or a hand primer cedar. And this one came with my kit years and years ago. So you would take this off. You can dump your whole tray of primers in there, shake them around with these little grooves. They all face upright. You could slap this lid on, then they won't. And then they, you hold it at an angle. They all funnel down, and you slide your case, which this isn't the right one, but you would slide your case in there, squeeze the handle, it push the primer, and you could just do a whole bunch faster than this. But being that you're new, you don't know if you want to stick with it or whatever. This works just fine. And most of these come with uh, a small and a large. So this one did seem a little sloppy. I can find my parts bag. I try to keep all my bits and bobs out of every press available. So this is probably this one right here. So you got two of them and they're different. They're different sizes, but this is probably the correct one that needs to be in there. Now a little tray to dump these would probably be beneficial and you do want to make sure that the oils on your hands that you're not handling these things too much. Yep, so that fits super centered in there. That's the correct one. What one was there? Push all the way back. All right, so I am using my electronic powder dispenser. But uh, like this kit gives you this scoop. Don't just assume that the scoop in your little thing that says 0.5 cc. You can, uh, they give you a charge table. It's not going to be the best option. You can go ahead and pick yourself up. Uh, I have a little digital scale here that I use sometimes. And a kit one, which is probably buried somewhere in all my stuff, is like a little triple beam balance. They're very little and it weighs out just fine. And just take your time, but uh, I'm using a Hornady auto dispenser. So here we go. So we got this case lifted up a little bit. We're going to put our case in. We're going to go all the way till we hit the expander. We have the powder. There's my powder. We're going to go ahead, dump and rattle. We'll set that on our auto dispenser. We're going to go ahead, pull our case out, and we're going to set it in the block. And we can go ahead and set our next case in. Go up till we hit our expander all the way. Wait on our auto dispenser. Right there. We're using 16.5 grains of 110. Okay. Now we're going to pull it out. Set it in the tray. Same thing right here. All the way till it hits our expander. Wait for our powder, dump our powder around, pull it up. Okay, so that would be one step. You could go ahead and do as many as you have holes for, and I'll get back with you once I got this block full, and we'll switch to the next die. Okay, so I have my block full right now, and I'm going to take some projectiles here. So i got a projectile. I've gone ahead and I've changed my uh, seating die, bullet seating die, okay? So I'm just going to put my case back in here. I'm going to set one of the projectiles. And then we're just going to slowly go up. I can feel it pushing in. And I'm going to back it off a little bit. And I can see it needs to go a little bit more. And this is how you got to go about checking your depth. You don't want to just ram it on in there. A little bit more. A little bit more. I got it bottomed out, but it needs to go just a little bit more. So I gotta break this loose. Oh, we don't have to break that loose. We're good there. We just move this top part down just a little smidge. 
this a little bit more. Getting there. We just gotta play around with this till we get it right where we want it. Well, that's pretty close. So if we looked in our book, it's gonna tell us an overall length. So it can only be 1.590 maximum length. So we'll go ahead, we'll zero out our caliper here. We'll close down on it. So right now we're at uh, 1.615. So we gotta come down. It's not gonna take much, just ease it on in there. Okay, so we're gonna adjust our crimp die here so I've gone ahead followed my directions put your crimp die in till it touches your shell plate shell holder back this out put your cartridge in let it come all the way in screw the crimp part down till it touches pull it out and we're gonna go half a turn so this is where maybe a felt tip pen will come in handy. So we'll just make a line, a little squiggly line right there. Doesn't have to be precise. There's half a turn. Push it in all the way, pull it out. And you can see right there, it crimped our case. So there we go. One finished round on a single stage press. Okay, so it's, it takes a little bit of time. Whoa, my goodness. I don't know how long I've been doing this. It's taken me a little longer because obviously I'm making a video. But then once you get your finished rounds, they sell boxes that you can put your rounds in like this. I have some 38 specials left over. But you can go ahead and put them in there. Or you can throw them in bags. I like to use... Uh, not water bottles, but big mouth bottles like tea comes in those work good You could slide them in there make sure they're nice and dry before you put any ammunition in there And then it's just a good cheap way to store your stuff. So All right, so I hope this video helps somebody out I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish a pile of these things off here and uh, We'll catch you next time Maybe we'll be doing something different, but I hope this helps. I really do hope this helps somebody and uh made sure that they kind of know what they're doing. This is not the end all be all of reloading here by no means, not a professional reloader or anything. So it's just, just a guy in his basement, right? So, and you can make rounds for plinking or hunting and having fun. So we'll catch you guys next time. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button.